And now, for our featured presentation. You are watching the Jonathan Desperney Gospel Channel. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. At this time, we pause to pay a special tribute to the outstanding police officer who represented the Los Angeles Police Department Special Weapons and Tactics. Officer Randall Simmons. <laughs> Elder Ron Simmons is holding a wonderful photograph as a gift on behalf of Bishop Charles Blake and the entire West Angeles family. We give this to Randy's wife, Lisa Simmons. God bless you. May the Lord keep you. Well, we'll say, do we serve a faithful God? Is he a faithful God? Is he an awesome God? Well, we want to encourage you on today that whatever you're going through, despite your situation, that God has not forgotten you. Jesus loves you. And we're going to praise his name. Amen? Come on.
came here to give God all the praise. Amen. We got to let go of our situations, all those evil thoughts, and keep our minds meditated on him, on Jesus, because he said it. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. I am not forgotten. glad God knows your name. He knows the number of hairs that are upon your head. He loves you intimately. And if you'd been the only sinner alive, Jesus would have given his life just for you. I want you to stand everybody. I want you to greet at least five people. And I want you to shake their hands, smile at them, and make them feel welcome. And sing to them, I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. you to make it. My world is better because you're in it. I'm stronger because of you. I want you to survive. I want you to make it. I want you to have the highest level of fulfillment and happiness that is possible. When you're happy, you can help me. You can bless me. You can lift me. I'm not going to get an attitude if you come driving by in a Rolls Royce. I'm going to praise God for you. You might let me ride in it. 
It's all right with me if you get $10 billion. I won't get jealous. I'll just praise God for you. I might need a loan sometime. What kind of person is it that goes around hating on folk? Don't want to see anybody else happy. Don't want to see anybody else blessed. The more you're blessed, the better the world is. So I thank God for you, and I'm so glad you're here. I'm especially happy for our law enforcement and fire protection and public service individuals. We honor you today. We're so thankful that you took time to be with us. I know that sometimes it can wear you out being honored and it can wear you out being congratulated and commended. They can run you all over the world and that you would take time to allow us to have the privilege of expressing our esteem and regard and respect for you is a favor that we consider you to have done for us and we're so proud of what you do. We pray for you that God will sustain you and keep you and protect you. We're so thankful that you're there to help us and to protect us. So let's give all of our public service individuals a rousing applause and thank God for them. Yes. It's our rich honor to have honored and celebrated the excellent and illustrious life of Mr. Randall Simmons. We're so glad to have his family with us. And we want you to know, we praise God for you not only today, but any time that we can express our love or show our esteem, give counsel or encouragement. We stand by and we stand ready and we'll never forget the wonderful service that you've rendered and given to us, presenting to us that wonderful man who had such an illustrious career. And we praise God for Sheriff Lee Baca here on today. How we honor him. We honor all of the other heads of departments and representatives of those individuals. Wish we could call all of your names again, but know that we respect you and honor you. I do want to mention the name of Reverend Samuel Morgan. He is the Commissioner of Chaplains for the Church of God in Christ Worldwide. And we're glad to have him with us also. Many of our chaplains are around the world. And one Church of God in Christ chaplain was injured in Iraq several months ago and is recuperating well. So we thank God for the work of our military and the work of our public servants here in the city of Los Angeles. I'm overjoyed to see so many dear friends in the house of the Lord, and I want to acknowledge some of them. We're glad to have sitting with Sister Blake, uh, Mrs. Linda Mathis. She's a faithful member of West Angeles, and she's the wife of Judge Greg Mathis. Would you stand, please, and let's welcome her. God bless you. The Mathis children are also here, Kamari and Army. Uh, would you stand, please, son and daughter and uh, their friend, Candice is also with them. Stand up, Candice. Let's give them a rousing applause. The assistant to Judge Mathis, Kevin Drake is, Drake is also here. Um, he is a retired law enforcement officer, and he takes care of Judge Mathis. Brother Drake, would you stand, please, and let's welcome him. I understand that Miss Altavis Davis is here. She is the widow of the late Sammy Davis Jr. May we recognize you if we don't uh, offend you. Would you please stand and God bless you. How happy we are that you're with us. It's a privilege to have you in the house of the Lord. And the wife of one of our general board members, one of the 12 men um, directorate um, members of the Church of God in Christ, general board member Earl Wright, his wife, is here. That's First Lady Robin Wright, all the way from Detroit, Michigan. Uh, would you stand, Sister Wright, and let's welcome her. She's accompanied by Evangelist Denise Lomax, Chair Lady of the Licensing Board for the Nation of Japan, and uh, we would like for you to stand. God bless you. How happy we are to have you. And to my literal amazement, I was almost knocked off my feet 
to look into the face of my dear brother, my dear friend from Perth Amboy, New Jersey, pastor of that great church in that city, Bishop Donald Hilliard. Would you stand? Let's welcome this anointed man of God and leader of the Lord's church. Overjoyed to see him. We've got political representatives here. Assemblyman Mike Davis is here, and we want to praise God for him and all of our political leaders and individuals who serve us in that capacity. Finally, the guest of Deacon and Mrs. Wayne Butler, Steve and Cheryl Vines. We want to welcome them also to the house of the Lord. Would you please stand also and give us an opportunity to welcome you. Oh, I've got a couple of others. Reverend Roger Cheeks, pastor of New Dominion Fellowship in Terre Haute, Indiana. Would you stand, please, and let us welcome you to the house of the Lord. There you are. All right. The Bouchalki family from Toulouse, France. Bouchalki family from Toulouse, France. Would you please stand and let us welcome you to the house of the Lord here. Oh, there you are. Welcome. All the way from France. Well, we've got such wonderful guests, and we appreciate all of you. I want to make just a couple of observations, and then we will proceed with our service. Brother Earl Jordan is going to come with an uh, observation, and then we're going to come back and present the man of God who will share um, the word of the Lord. Uh, our youth department wants to meet with the parents and volunteers that uh, have children or who are interested in serving in our youth department. That is 1 p.m. on Saturday, February 23rd in the Crystal Room. And we put high priority on our young people. As a matter of fact, this is our, what choir are you all called? Youth and Young Adult Choir. They're really filled with energy today. Let's clap our hands and praise God for them. If I did some of the things they do, you'd have to send me in for repair. <laughs> they have such energy, and we praise God for them, and uh, they're ministering to us. We had hundreds of law enforcement people in our 8 a.m. service, and I requested at least 50 of them to join with me this afternoon, and I send that appeal out today also. I would like 50 law enforcement individuals to stand by uh, around 4, 4.30 um, so that if we see that uh, some of these members of West Angeles are not showing up, we can go over their house. Don't make us come over your house now. I'll be looking for you on tonight, and I want to see you at this time. And uh, what a joy it is to be honored in this way in my home city. And so we're excited about seeing you on tonight. Judge Greg Mathis is a national figure known for his advocacy campaigns and his efforts for equal justice. His inspirational life story is that of a street youth who rose from jail to judge. And his story has provided hope to millions who watch him on the award-winning television show, Judge Mathis Each Day. In addition, his weekly newspaper column brings social and political insight to readers throughout the country. His public service career began in college where he led the Free South Africa movement and voter registration campaigns on his campus. After graduating from college in 1983, he joined the staff of Detroit Mayor Councilman Clyde Cleveland, continued to work as an advocate for equal justice to Reverend Jesse Jackson's rainbow push. He received his Bachelor's of Science degree from Eastern Michigan University and his Juris Doctor degree from University of Detroit School of Law in 1987. In his efforts to reach out to youth both in and outside the courtroom, he and his wife Linda have assisted thousands of youth in their nonprofit agency, Young Adults Asserting Themselves, Y-A-A-T. He's dedicated to offering youth second chances, spreads his message of youth empowerment and equal justice as he travels to speak to audiences all across the country. His national education and youth crusades have attracted tens of thousands of parents and students throughout America. He's received numerous awards and accolades from city, state, and government officials. and has been recognized for his efforts by numerous newspapers, magazines, television affiliates, 
such as ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, having appeared on such shows as The Tonight Show, Jay Leno, The Today Show, Larry King Live, The Ellen DeGeneres Show, and his inspirational story of a young man who rose from delinquency to Michigan District Court Judge is chronicled in his autobiography, Inner City Miracle. Married, he's a proud father of four wonderful children. I am so proud to say that he is a member of West Angeles Church, a faithful and a dear friend of ours. And I've been waiting and longing for the opportunity to present him to share with our Sunday morning congregation. And this very special day gives me that opportunity. You are in for a wonderful treat. Our brother, our friend, our member. And he's going to make himself at home today because he is at home and among dear friends. He will come to us to share uh, the word of the Lord. Just before he comes, we're going to have a sermonic selection. And it's going to be in honor of the Simmons family. And I know we're going to be blessed as they come to us with that selection and then the next voice you will hear as we stand to receive him at that time will be Judge Greg Mathis. This morning, as we appreciate our law enforcement, our firefighters, and our military personnel, we also would like to pay tribute to Officer Randall Simmons. He was definitely a giant in, in God's army, and we thank God for allowing him to be in this world in this, at this time with us. So we just want to pay tribute. And we also want to encourage you this morning that however you may be feeling, whatever situations you have, there is healing water that flows from the veins of Jesus. And that healing water can make you whole. So be encouraged, lift up your head, because he is the Savior.
is here. Your healing is here. There is a bomb in Gilead. And your healing is here. Yes, it is. And forgiveness is here. Yes, it is. It doesn't matter what you've done. Forgiveness is here. Oh, salvation is here. Yes, it is. Salvation is here. And acceptance is here. Come as you are without pretense. Acceptance is here. And His mercy is here. Oh, yes, it is. His mercy is here. Yes, it is. And His prayer. Is here. The presence of the Lord is here. You can receive what you need. The presence of the Lord is here. And His love is here. Yes, it is. Receive the love.
Thank you. Thank you very much. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. To Bishop Blake, to First Lady Blake, to Sheriff Baca, to all of our distinguished leaders and elected officials, and most importantly, to our law enforcement and to our military. We thank you for being here. Today we also show a special love to Sister Simmons and her family who made the ultimate sacrifice of her husband who gave his life in service to us. We can never thank her enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I thank God for my family who is here with me and I can't thank them enough for what they've given me. My son, Amir, my daughter, Kamara, the love of my life, Linda Mathis. We met a couple of decades ago at college. It's only been a couple of decades. <laughs> and when we met, we both had our dreams, as most college students do. She dreamed of opening her own preschool, and she majored in early childhood education. I majored in pre-law and dreamed of becoming a lawyer and working in politics and civil rights and social justice. And as God would have it, when we finish, not only was she able to open one school, but indeed a chain of schools in Detroit, educating thousands of our young people while raising four children. Give her another hand, please. So proud to have her as my wife. I want to also tell you how blessed we are here at West Angeles to have a leader of the largest African-American denomination in the world and the fastest growing denomination of any type in the world. He is a world leader indeed, known throughout as one of the foremost world leaders. When I travel around the country, indeed over in Africa, they know him. When myself and Reverend Jackson, when we go around the country and work, we run into him. And so we should be proud and not take him for granted, as so many times we do. This evening, we have a salute to our bishop. And if we really love him, we'll show him a sign. We'll show him a sign this evening over at the forum. Again, I thank our law enforcement because you all are doing God's work in an upside-down society. That's really the type of society we live in. We live in a society that pays millions of dollars 
to entertainers, many of whom glorify the drug and thug life. We pay millions of dollars to athletes, many of whom spend their time and money fighting and killing dogs, chasing women at the strip clubs, throwing thousands of dollars in the air, won't help or benefit their community. You know, that's a, that's a new rage now. That's the new rage is the, the, the athletes going to the clubs and, and they throw up tens of thousands of dollars in the air. One football player, Pac-Man Jones is his name, he's been suspended from the NFL because he went into the club and threw $80,000 into the air. It's called, who knows, make it rain. Uh-oh, somebody done been in there. Uh-oh. You know what it's called. It's called making it rain. Rain and money. It's an upside down society. Because those who do the most to protect us and save our lives are some of the least appreciated and underpaid. That's why I say that. But let me assure you that you're doing God's work. And when you're doing God's work, there's no amount of money we could pay you to be worth your while. No amount. We thank you again. Today in my message, I want to make reference again to Ephesians, which was our scripture this morning, which spoke about putting on the full armor of God to fight against injustice. You know, when I speak at churches, many of the pastors, they remind me, remember, you a judge, don't, don't you go too far. Don't you bootleg, don't be out here bootleg preaching. You don't have a license. You say, I don't practice law without a license, then don't you preach without one. He say, you a judge and not a preacher. But you know, God used judges to give a message during the children of Israel sojourn. He used judges to lead his people. Samson was a judge. Samuel was a judge. And although I'm no Samuel, and I'm certainly not Samson, with my Delilah, don't have one. <laughs> I know God, and today I'm a minister of justice, delivering God's word. And although you might see me on television having fun, laughing and joking, and, you know, I don't mind doing that. These aren't heavy cases. These are small claim cases. No one is being tried for any crime. I don't have to look into the victims' faces and empathize with them or lock anybody up. Uh, these are just small cases. And by the way, we get these cases from courtrooms around the country. They're real cases, real people. We send out uh, our researchers to look up cases that have already been filed and if they look a little interesting they call the folks and ask if they want to remove it from their local courts and bring it to us as arbitrators and so that's what you see and they're binding as arbitration is 
But once again, I have a little fun with them. Because some of it is really funny. <laughs> and I taped next door to uh, Jerry Springer. And sometimes I think he's sending them folks over to me. I really do. But I want you to know that off television and off the bench, all of my adult life, I have been a fighter for social justice and making sure that the rights of all of us are protected and making sure we fight against denial of equal opportunity and injustice in our society. And so I say it as fact that if I laugh and play on television, there's nothing really funny about the injustice we see in our community every day. There's nothing funny about having more black men in prison than we do in college. Nothing funny at all about that. There's nothing funny about a society that will provide our children with a substandard education and expect for them to compete. You provide this unequal education in our community, you remove the jobs and replace the jobs with guns and drugs for us to kill ourselves with. And then those left standing, you put them in this prison industrial complex, which is now being privatized, where they're paying prisoners $1 a day to make products that are being sold on the open market throwing unionized workers on the outside out of work to use slave labor on the inside, making money off the misery of those whom they failed to educate. Nothing funny about that. Nothing funny at all. But I don't want to keep stating the statistics. You all know what it is. You all know that whenever there's a budget cut, first thing that goes is education. You all know, or you should know, that in the last 30 years, the prison budget has tripled while the education budget has barely kept up with the rate of inflation. And instead of locking our children up, I'm sorry, instead of lifting our children up, they're locking them up. And some need to be taken off the street. We want these dangerous children and criminals off the street but it's what we do with them once they are jailed that determines our safety to a large measure. Because we see now this revolving door where there's a 70% recidivism rate, meaning 70% of those who are released from prison go back within an 18-month time period because there's no more rehabilitation. Thank God we have a sheriff who's working in that direction. <laughs> With treatment programs, etc., won't let them out unless they've been treated or submit themselves to future treatment. That's what we need. Privileged kids go to treatment and counseling, our kids go to jail. Something wrong with that. But I don't want to blame 
the government. I don't want to go into the blame game. We, 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 we do that a lot. Don't want to blame society. Don't want to blame the government. Government not putting that pipe up to your mouth. We know that there's racism and discrimination and denial of equal opportunity, but we have to fight back. And I'm not talking about fighting back by burning down your own community. That's no way to fight back. Don't fight back by shooting a police officer or shooting at the police officer because of some perceived injustice that you're feeling. If you feel that there's injustice, then join one of these organizations. Join the NAACP. Join Rainbow Push. Join West Angeles Church of God and Christ where we have many programs and under the leadership of our bishop. Running around thinking you can fight your battles. The Bible tells us that it's not by might nor by power but by my spirit says the Lord. Brothers, I know you face so many obstacles. But you can't overcome them by running to the corner. Our sisters face obstacles too. Working two jobs, some of them. Raising children by themselves. Going to school. But you don't see them on the corner feeling sorry for themselves unless they're chasing some no good man. So why are you running to the corner? Why are you running there? Playing bad all the time. Talking about how tough you are. Got your chest stuck out. Talking about you the man, I'm the man. And I want my respect. Ain't nobody gonna respect you till you get off that corner and fight back against the obstacles. Nobody's going to respect you until you show some real courage and drop your gun and pick up your book and go out here and compete in mainstream society. That's the only way you're going to win some respect. No one's going to respect you until you take care of those babies you're producing and stop running away from your responsibility. That's how you will get respect. Claim to be so tough. If you're so tough, why are you out here doing drive-by shootings? Shoot at somebody and then run. How tough is that? Who can't shoot and then run? <laughs> Driving by. Do like they used to do in old the cowboys. What they do? They'd have two guns on their side. And they'd face each other mano to mano. They said, we're going to count to 10. <laughs> Walk towards it. Whoever pulled the fastest, that's who's left standing. Now, I don't advocate any type of violence. <laughs> the judge is not telling these kids, the judge is not telling the kids to go up and stand in front of each other. I'm just telling them to stop this nonsense driving by with these straight bullets killing our children. Can't even shoot straight. Always driving by. If you want to drive by someone, drive by Iraq. Drive by there. Don't drive by there. Like these military men and women do. Maybe you'll hit Bin Laden with a, with a straight bullet. If you like driving by so much, drive by one of these burning houses like our firemen do. Go inside and rescue these children and families who are caught in a fire. Drive by there. Drive by a 
crime scene and go in and rescue a person who's being victimized by a crime. Do that. If you're so courageous, you're not courageous at all. You are a coward. You are a coward and you need to man up and get off that corner. I'm mad. I'm upset. We got our dear sister Simmons here and her family giving their, her husband's life while these thugs out here running around feeling sorry for themselves. And, and I can challenge them. I'm not scared. I've been there and done that. You can do what you want. I know where your mind is. And I'm not scared of you. Not scared at all. Do like Jesus did. Stand up to the powers and principalities. He didn't run. In fact, he offered his life. He said, come on, Sanhedrins. You can get me. I'm not going anywhere. He said, come on, Pontius Pilate. I'm not going anywhere. He stepped up. He said, take me. I'll give my life so that others might live eternally. That's courage. And that's, that's what we must tell our young people. We must tell them about the story of Jesus. And not this weak, milk toast, humble Jesus. That's, that, 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 that's fine. He was humble. He didn't ride a Rolls Royce like some of, you know. Not gonna go there, but we know some of them got Rolls Royce and don't have a youth program. Anyhow, <laughs> didn't ride a Rolls Royce. Didn't ride what was a chariot of his time. He rode the donkey, the lowest form of transportation, when he wasn't walking. Humble, he was humble, but you know what he did at that time when the money changers were in the temple. He raised the devil when he had to. He threw him over, cleaned house. That's the revolutionary fighter we must tell these young men about. Challenge them. Because they don't know that Jesus had their same situation, same thing. He could have been on the corner feeling sorry for himself. Same situation. Born homeless in a manger. Folks gossiped and wasn't sure about who his father really was. Say, Joseph can't have no babies. Who is that baby daddy? Didn't have the right to vote under King Herod. Government was on his back. But he didn't run to the corner. He could have been there. Oh, my mom was teenage. Mama, I'm not sure about who my daddy was. Oh, the government got his foot on my neck and I just don't know. Mary, go get me some wine. <laughs> but he didn't do that. He said, I am the son of God. And I've come to change the world. I've come to give my life. I've come to show each and every one of us that we are sons and daughters of God. And we can change our community and we can change our lives and we can change the lives of others. We're not divine as he was. But he gave us the ultimate example. Gave us the ultimate example. You know, I face many obstacles. You know, Bishop 
spoke of them, and some of you know that. Some of you know that I spent most of my youth on the other side of the law. And when God changed my direction, there were still obstacles. In fact, there's always going to be obstacles because even after I'd fought my way out of the jails and streets of Detroit, they still tried to hold me back. I mean, I went and got my bachelor's degree, my law degree. I started a youth agency back in my old neighborhood where I had done so much damage to redeem myself and to help those who I had left behind had worked for the mayor, Jesse Jackson, and many others before going for my bar license because I went to school at law, uh, law school at night. So by that time, I had done so much, but I went before the state bar ethics committee, and they decided that I wasn't fit to be a lawyer. Said I wasn't rehabilitated. They said I wasn't sure. I said, what do you mean I wasn't, sh- you're not sure I'm rehabilitating now? No, no, wait, 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 just don't know. <laughs> we see here at, at age 16, you did such and such and such and such. Did you do it? <laughs> Why'd you do it? I said, what are you talking, say 16, you're right, that's 15 years ago. What are you talking about? Give me my law like. Now, now, now. <laughs> We're not sure. Not sure. What do you think I'm going to go and break into somebody's house or something? I'm a lawyer. But I didn't give up. Didn't give up. I didn't run to the corner and try and drink my problems away. Didn't run to the crack house and try and smoke my problems away. Didn't come home and beat my woman out of frustration. Did our baby. I fought back. Until I won my right to practice three years later at the Michigan Supreme Court. Didn't didn't give up, fought back. And that's what we have to tell our brothers and sisters to do. Fight back, don't give up, because there's always going to be someone standing in the door of your success and closing the door in your face and putting obstacles in front of you. Don't nobody want to give up the privilege that they have? You better compete and try to take what's yours. Take your share. What you think somebody look like? They've built up everything for their children and they got all this money and sending their children to Harvard and Yale and all this privilege. And then you just think you're going to walk in and they're going to say, come on in. You can take from my children what you want. Want the best for their children. I want the best for my children. I'll be very honest. I'm not giving up my children's uh, uh, well being for no one else. You'll come second, a distant second. So we have to realize that that's going to happen. In many instances, they block you to keep their own resources. Because even after all of that, they didn't stop with just denying me my license. Because a few years later, after practicing law and representing young folks as a defense lawyer, wanting to change lives like the judge had changed mine and trying to give a second chance, I noticed that none of these judges really cared. They were locking them up and throwing away the key. They had one lawyer, uh, one judge named Mean Geraldine. Mean Geraldine Ford, I'll never forget. She used to tell you, 
to look at the clock. So you should determine how many years you got by what time it is. She said, look at the clock. She said, what time is it? It's five to ten, Your Honor. Well, that's how many years you got. Five to ten. That's unfair. So I decided, I said, I'm going to run for judge so I can make a difference. But here they came again. Tried to destroy my campaign. The media dug my background up. Or the enemy of my campaign dug my background up and gave it to the media. They put it all over the news. He was a thug. He was a criminal. He's an ex-felon. That's how everybody found out about my story. <laughs> I wasn't going around telling folks. I didn't, when I was working for the mayor, I didn't go, hey, Mr. Mayor, I, I got to tell you this. Uh, I used to be a thug. I've done such and such. I, I was trying to conform like everybody else. I didn't want anybody to know my background, but... It was them trying to destroy me. You know, man has a plan and God has his plan. And we know that God is the master plan. Because what man meant for bad. God used it to lift me up and be an inspiration to others. So I say to you, as I leave you, we must tell these brothers and sisters, don't you let anything hold you back. Don't you let anybody tell you what you can't do. And if they close the door of opportunity in your face, just kick it down. Put on the full armor of God like Ephesians tells us to. And you get out there and get on your knees and fight for what you want. Get on your knees and fast and go out there and fight for what you want. Get on your knees and meditate and fight for what you want. Because if you turn to God and let him fight your battles... There'll be no obstacle or weapon formed against you that will prosper. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Thank you very much. What a word. Please remain in your places just for a moment. We've been able to hear the dream, the goals, the aspirations that motivated Judge Greg Mathis' life. We've been able to hear his testimony of how he accomplished his dream and how he succeeded in reaching for his vision. There are dreamers in the house today. There are people here who have goals and objectives. There are people here who are reaching for something in the future. I want to pray for your dreams. I want to assure you that they can and shall come to pass. Don't give up on your dream. Don't give up on your struggle. Keep on reaching. Keep on stretching. Are there any dreamers in the house? There's something you want to do for the good of the community, for the good of your family, for the good of those who are around you. If you've got a dream and you want to join in prayer with me regarding your dream, I just want you to lift your hand. It's your way of saying, yes, I've got a dream. There's something I want to do. I want to accomplish. 
It will make the world a better place. It will bless my family. It will bless those who are around me. I want to dedicate my dream to the Lord. and I want to seek the Lord's help, the Lord's blessing. As I pursue my dream, my goal, my objective. Dear Lord, I pray for those hands that are lifted. Thank you, dear Lord, that you've constituted us in such a way that we can formulate dreams and visions and goals and objectives that we can hunger to be more than we are and to do more than we've done. And dear Lord, you who have begun a good work in us will perform it until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. And even as you've given us this dream, we believe that you will give us the ability and the strength through your power to bring the dream to pass. You work in us both to will and to do of your good pleasure. And in as much as you've given us the will, the desire to do this, you'll give us the ability by your power. And so I bless the dreams of those who stand before me and have lifted their hands. Dear God, in the name of Jesus, give them your wisdom protect them and shield them and be around them so that nothing will interrupt their march toward their dream in the name of Jesus it shall come to pass in the name of Jesus it will be done we extend our faith to you and we trust you to bring it to pass now clap your hands and give God praise Hallelujah. I want to make a second appeal to those of you who have been wrestling with life, journeying down the road of life without a relationship with God. Life is not meant to be lived without God's involvement, without God's guidance, without God's help. Judge Mathers has told us how his life was transformed by the power of God. And I would assure you that you don't have the ability, the strength to make it without God's help. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. And the Apostle Paul said that it is in God, it is in God that we live and move and have our being. Someone's sins are not forgiven. Someone has no relationship with God. Someone does not know were you to die today that you'd spend eternity in the presence of Almighty God. So I want to pray for you. I want to call on the Lord with you. I want to believe God for the forgiveness of your sin. The Bible says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and he's just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The Bible says confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. Someone would say, preacher, pray for me. I want my sins forgiven. I will pray for you right where you stand, right where you are. Every sin you've ever committed can be forgiven and you can have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. If you want me to pray with you, lift your hand and hold it high. I need God. I need forgiveness. I need God's help and God's wisdom as I journey through life. Pray for me, preacher. Lift that hand, hold it high. Do not lower it until I tell you to do so. Dear Lord, I pray for every individual who's lifted their hands. I pray this day that their sins will be forgiven. That they will come into relationship with you for the rest of their lives. That they will have your power and your presence. That they'll have your anointing. That they'll have your strength in the name of Jesus. Everybody say this prayer with me, dear Lord. I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive me for the wrong I've been and the wrong I have done. I want to be saved. 
I want my sins forgiven. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that he died for my sin. I believe that he arose from the dead. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. I want him to be my guide. I want him to be my master. I want him to give me his wisdom that I may walk in his way. I thank you, dear Lord, that I am forgiven. I thank you, dear Lord, that I have new life. I thank you, dear Lord, that I am saved. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. A very simple prayer indeed. But the Bible teaches us that when you pray that simple prayer from your heart, all the forces of divinity go to work on your behalf. Your life is changed and your sins are forgiven. Those of you who lifted your hands a moment ago, lift your hand again, please. I want to say a word to you. I want to shake your hand. I want to know your name. I want your name on my prayer list so that I can pray for you. I want to write you a letter of encouragement this week, encouraging you in your walk with the Lord. I want to give you literature regarding salvation and how you can grow and develop in the things of God. I want our personal workers to minister to you for a moment and get that information for me. And so if you've lifted your hand, I'd like you to step out from where you are. Come and stand before the altar. I want to shake your hand. I want to write you. I want to pray for you. Come out. Come forward quickly. It'll only take a moment. Let's clap our hands and praise God for these as they come. Come forward, please. Help them come. Help them come. In the balcony, walk over to the side wall. Come down the steps and I'll be happy to meet you at the altar. God bless you. God bless you. Come forward quickly, please. If you're already saved and you want to join the church, you want to be a member of West Angeles, come forward quickly. I would love to be your pastor. Come forward, please. Hallelujah. Come forward. Let's clap our hands and praise God as these come. Come forward, please. Come forward, please. Come forward, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Everybody clap your hands and praise God for those who are here. The word of God is reliable and dependable. What God promises in his word, he performs. He says, if you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. He said, if you confess your sins, he's fat, just and faithful to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You have prayed sincerely with me. Every sin is forgiven. Jesus Christ becomes your partner for life to enable you to live on a level that you've never lived on before. He loves you as you've never been loved before. I'm so happy that you've come forward. I praise God that you've made this start. Your sins are forgiven. You have new life. But now you must grow. Now you must develop. Now you must learn the way of God. Study the word of God. Worship with the people of the Lord. Hear the word of God. Be taught the word of God. And that becomes your nourishment that will help you to become the person that God would have you to be. I'm growing too. There are people all around you who are growing, who are seeking to know God's way and God's will. We would love for you to join with us, share with us, cry with us, laugh with us as we journey toward the destination that the Lord has set for each and every one of you. I know something wonderful has happened to you today 
but that's just the start. When you see what God is going to do in your life, you will be overwhelmed and filled with joy. I'm glad you've come for it. I need a moment of your time. I want our workers to find out who you are. I want to write you this week. I want your name on my prayer list. I would love it if you joined our church and became a part of this fellowship. I would feel like I was really somebody if I was your pastor. And so consider us for your church home. We would love to have you as a part of our fellowship and we'd love to grow with you and become what God would have all of us to be. I'm going to shake hands with two lines of you as you come toward me. I'll be shaking with my right and with my left hand, but I want to touch each and every one of you. I'm sending you to that room right there where you will uh, meet with our personal workers who will get the information that I want them to get. I'm happy for you. Don't stop where you are. This is just the start. Get in church, get in worship, come to church Sunday, come to church Wednesday night, come to church and hear the word of the Lord and be blessed by God. Let's clap our hands and praise God for them, everybody. I know that I'm taking a little extra time but that was worth it I said that was worth it I want everyone now to prepare to share with the work of the Lord we left our offering until the end of this service that we usually do for 11 years we would pray the benediction and receive the offering even after the service was over and we did so because we were confident that the people of the Lord loved God enough to do that which was their privilege and that which was their responsibility. God has blessed us in so many wonderful, wonderful ways. And he's brought us for a long ways off. You were as poor as Job's turkey 20 years ago. But God opened the door and blessed you and you've risen higher than you were then. How many of you know the Lord is good? Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for supporting the more than 80 ministries of West Angeles that impact our community. Thank you for helping us as we have provided 400 living units of housing to our city, help people from welfare to work. We have done so many things that impact the Los Angeles community and your generosity and liberality help us to do it. We need your help and we appreciate it so very, very much and I'm encouraging everybody to share. Our law enforcement personnel, this is not for you. You are a guest and we're just glad to have you in. We may lay no request or imposition upon you, but you members of West Angeles, I'm talking to y'all. I want everybody who can to share your best gift and help us to continue doing the work of the Lord. We encourage our members on these Sundays to give a gift of at least $25 weekly or more for the support of your church. And you are so supportive and generous in doing so. And we praise God for all the tithers, all tithers. Will you please stand? Dear Lord, we ask thy blessing upon these who have purposed in their hearts to set aside the tenth for the support of your work. 
And we believe that you in faithfulness to your word will perform your promise and open the windows of heaven. Pour out blessings that there will not be room enough to receive. We praise you for faith and trust in the name of Jesus. And now will everyone send the gifts that we hold are but expressions of your love for us. It is you that give us power to get wealth and strength to labor and bring fruit from our labor and our work. And now we present a portion of that for the support of your work in Jesus' name. And we do it with joy and thanksgiving. Thank God. Amen. Clap your hands and praise God for the privilege of giving. Please be seated. The ushers are going to serve you. Remain. We are out of here in about four or five minutes. I'm so glad that you're here and I want everyone to share with the work of the Lord and this fabulous youth and young adult choir will sing for us. God bless you.
all of you for being here. I look over and see the famed and beloved and the beautiful Natalie Cole. Let's praise God for her and thank God for her presence in the house of the Lord. Now we will stand the explorers from the Southwest Division of the Los Angeles Police Department will retire the colors. Let's give these magnificent young people a rousing applause. Thank you for the dream. Thank you for the vision. Thank you for the opportunity to serve you and to bring glory to your name. Thank you, dear Lord, for these who protect us and who risk their lives for our well-being. We ask your blessing upon them and your strength. Sustain them, keep them, restore them. By as only you can restore. And as we go from vision to action and from dream to fulfillment, we ask that you will lead us and guide us, make us a blessing to the world, protect us and sustain us in all our days to come. For we ask it, in the name of Jesus and for his sake. Thank you for watching the Jonathan Desvernay Gospel Channel. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns forever and ever. Lift Him up. Lift Him up. Lift Him up. Come on.